counting down how many years left. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome all parishioners and visitors as we prepare to celebrate the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The CWL will once again be collecting new socks during the month of October. All socks will be given to five agencies in the area and are listed in the parish bulletin. Bins to collect your donations are located in the church foyer. Our designer purse bingo is 70% sold out, so do not delay. Get your table reserved soon for what promises to be an amazing event while supporting this major fundraiser. The St. Vincent de Paul Society will once again be selling honey at the Sunday Masses on October the 20th. This fundraiser helps to support their local programs, including clothing for school-aged children. Our celebrant today is Father Rico. Please stand and join in our processional hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather at this Mass in praise and worship of our God, we come to worship the Father of glory. And at this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Chase Startek, Tony Petrina, and Anna Maria Morris. I invite all the special friends of Jesus to come forward for our children's liturgy. Come on down, friends. and see him piercing through the door. Friends, today the scripture talks about how God made our mommies and daddies fall in love with each other. The great sacrament of marriage. Marriage is so important in the life of the church. That's how you got here, that's how I got here. Family life is so beautiful, especially in the sacrament of marriage. So we give praise to God for the love that moms and dads have for each other. So that way they create children like you and me, even though I'm just a big kid, right? But my mommy and daddy made me too because God loves so much. So we're going to find out about how important it is for moms and dads to live holiness in their marriages. So let's ask God to bless you and most importantly them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Who's going to be our leader today? <laughs> Fantastic, Leo. He just had a birthday, so that's very fitting. Happy belated, Leo. Let's follow Leo. Can you follow him? Come this way. Children, go follow your brother. For the times we've chosen division and sin over love and forgiveness, compassion and mercy, we bow our heads and ask for God's mercy, for he is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Christ, have mercy. You are the one who leads us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper as his, hel as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its, its, ribs with its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and he clings to his wife and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. We do indeed see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through him all things exist, in bringing many sons and daughters to glory should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through suffering. For the one who sacrifices 
and those who are sanctified are all from one. For this reason, he is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. The word of the Lord. and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Some Pharisees came and to test Jesus they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Jesus answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And Jesus said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that Jesus might touch them. And the, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And Jesus took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The words of the God. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. This beautiful passage from Genesis, which is echoed in St. Mark's Gospel, quoted by the Lord himself, shows us of the great beauty and importance of the sacrament of holy matrimony. One of the seven sacraments of our church, the Holy Mother Church wants us to reflect upon because it applies to every single person whether we are called to married life or not. The importance and the sacredness of holy matrimony must always be respected and protected by Holy Mother Church and thereby her children. That's all of us. So let's unpack it. First of all, how many of you had this reading from the book of Genesis at your weddings? Oh, everybody loves weddings. Come on. I wasn't at most of your weddings, but I'm sure it was this one or probably one other. Anybody? Yeah, now the hands go up, right? It's a beautiful passage that God shows. We are not the animals. We are not the planets. All that stuff was just okay. But he calls creation very good when we are reflected of him. 
and notice that the bone is taken, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, is around the heart. Because again, this is not an, a friend, an extra, an add-on. The woman is integral to the life of the man. The man is integral to the life of the woman. Because as God joins together, then how does the church define matrimony? 1030 Mass. Pardon? Yeah, yeah, that's not the definition. What's the definition? That's the rule. No, that's not the definition. That's what happens. Thank you, Jackie. One man, one woman. Why? So they're not lonely? For the procreation and education of children. That's what marriage is. It's defined by Almighty God and taught by her, his church, excuse me, Holy Mother Church. One man and one woman for the procreation and education of children. That's what the, sac the sanctity and sacredness of marriage is all about. Can they get married on a beach? No. Can you get married in a vineyard? No. Can you get married in somebody's backyard? No. Where does God want marriages to take place? Right here, before his altar, before him in the Blessed Sacrament, right? Civil marriages can take place wherever because the province says it's okay. But what does God say? God wants his sacraments to happen in his house. And the sacredness of marriage has not changed. It's not defined by social trends. It's not defined by the government. But it is defined by Almighty God that he calls us to his house as the eternal host who wants to flood his grace upon the couple who comes before him. Because marriage defined by the world is very different. It is seen very differently. And Pope Francis says, look, we support civil unions because we want to make sure that people have legal rights. But there's a difference between a civil union and a sacramental marriage. And the difference is the God factor. The God factor. Because people can say, God bless you when you get married on a beach. What does it mean? I say God bless you to people all the time. It doesn't mean that they've entered into a sacrament. Sacraments are different. Sacraments allow the individual, or in this case, in, in the marriage, it's the only sacrament where there's two parties at the same time, to receive the sanctifying grace of the Father, the love of Jesus, and the holiness and presence of the Holy Spirit to sustain them all the days of their life. The beautiful vows. I take you to be my wife, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. No more beautiful words. We don't create our own vows. We don't use poetry or some other things. Holy Mother Church has given us these beautiful vows to which a bride says to her husband, to which a groom says to his wife, and the two become one, and God changes them. God transforms them. The two become one. And, as you said, it should never be divided. This is the beauty. This is what Holy Mother Church celebrates. Yesterday we had two people celebrating their 50th anniversary. And I said, you know, we couldn't have planned this better, right? Because the readings, the gospel too. Oh, I didn't ask. How many of you had this gospel as your gospel at your wedding? <laughs> Everybody almost, right? Mark 10. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. But it's not just words. It's entering into the buy-in, to be all in, to use a poker analogy. God wants us to be all in in whatever vocation we have. In my case, priesthood, many of your case who are sacramentally married, or those of you who are civilly married. This is God speaking. Talk to your church. Talk to Father Rico to assist you in having your marriage blessed. Why? The world continues to show very scary statistics that are scaring our young people away from marriage. 50% divorce rate in our country. It scares people away from even entering in. How many people have even said to me, well, you know, it's like rolling the dice. It might work, it might not. What? This isn't a gamble. We're not at the roulette table, black or red. You got a 50% chance, unless green comes up, then it blows everything out of the water, right? 
But the reality, this is not a gamble. This is not what life is. This is not what marriage is. Marriage is to be built on the rock and foundation of Jesus Christ. So that statistic drops to those who practice their faith on a regular basis, not just Catholics. An 86% success rate when God is infused in the relationship. And for Catholics who practice their faith on a regular basis, the number is as high as 91%. So Kathy and Craig Freefeld, who were right here last night, are not some surprise but rather an expression of people who've committed their lives by the grace of Almighty God to love one another, even when the other is unlovable, even when the other has let us down, intentionally or unintentionally, because it's not about me. Like in every expression of our vocation, it's not about me, it's about the other. How am I helping my spouse to enhance their life? How are they helping me to enhance my life? How are we joined together, blessed by God, children, whether naturally or through adoption, to create that domestic church, the beginning, the little church family in our home, so that the church can flourish and grow, as God says, not in the first reading, but be fruitful and multiply. This is God's expectation. The church is very much pro-sex, the church is very much pro-family life, but in the way that God intends, in the great san sanctity and sacredness of holy matrimony. So we as church have an obligation. I'm not married. I do a lot of marriage counseling, but I'm not married. But those of you who are, how are you living that vocational call? Are you all in? Do you see to the needs of your spouse on a daily basis? Or is it all about you? Are we still learning about the grace of sacrifice, selflessness, compassion, forgiveness? This is the grace that comes to us from God alone. I'm not going to get it from some self-help book or from somebody else. It comes to us from Almighty God. And it needs to be renewed on an ongoing basis. That's what the Eucharist does for me. That as I come to Mass with my family, Lord, this week, you know what? We had a good week. There weren't too many fights in our household. Lord, this was a difficult week. <laughs> you know, we almost killed each other this week because X, Y, and Z happened. But guess what? There was no funeral. There was no murder. Please, God, let's celebrate that, right? Because often we also define marriage as hard. We say marriage is hard, marriage is tough. Mar no, marriage is beautiful. Marriage is beautiful. And anything that is beautiful can be hard, can take work. But just because it's hard doesn't mean we give up, doesn't mean we think, oh, forget it. Anything that, you know, it's just too much work. You know, going to university is too much work, so I'm just not going to go. You know what? paying for a house. You know, it's too much work. 25 years, I'm just not going to live in a house. I'm going to live in a tent. Nobody says that, right? Hard work pays off. And so when we're all in in our marriages, we see the fruits of that. And so we need to be all in, whether we're called to married life, in my case, ordained life, perhaps you too, or single life. We need to be all in. Number two, the church reminds us that we need to pray for those who are married. We need to surround them with our love and prayers. When we see things happening, we need to ask questions, not probing, not being nosy, but paying attention. Because a new couple is like a teenager. Teenagers think they know everything, right? How many couples come to me in marriage prep? Oh, Father, it's fine that the church wants us to, you know, spend this weekend together. We've already talked about all this. We've already talked about all this. Fantastic! Great! And then I'll ask them a question. So, what's your answer about this? Uh, well, uh, maybe we didn't talk about that. And what happens if this happens? What's your plan of attack on that? Well, Father, you, you seem to think all these negative things are going to happen in my marriage. They might! Are you ready if it does? Because Father Rico sees all kinds of different things. And while your parents' marriage may be perfect in your eyes, ask them if their marriage is perfect. 
And so we need to surround married couples, friends, with prayer. We need to surround them by listening. We need to surround them by loving them enough to say, hey, you know what? You're out too many days during the week. You need to go home to your wife and kids. You need to go home to your husband. You need to stop being social and start raising your kids. Because you know what the high school kids say at BT? They don't say, you know what, Father Rico? I wish my mom and dad put in more overtime. You know what they ask for? Presence. Mom and dad are too busy working and doing everything else. What are we doing? How do we spend our time? The church wants us to focus on family life, to spend that time together, especially in prayer. Tomorrow is Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. Yoga class, meditations mean nothing but a family that prays together, that asks the Holy Spirit to come down upon them and Mama Mary to wrap them in her mantle of love. Now, this is family life. It was the foundation of my home. Because believe it or not, I'm sure my parents wanted to kill each other. More my mom to my dad, I think, than dad to mom. But anyway, we'll leave that alone. He's hopefully in heaven. He can't defend himself, but sorry. But my brothers and I, same thing. We would fight and argue. It's the rosary that brought us together. Mama Mary told us to calm down. The rosary is this tool to help families to grow. Are we using Mama Mary's beautiful gift of peace to bring our families together, the rosary? So we need to pray for couples. Now, we also need to pray for those who are engaged, because like teenagers, they think they got it all figured out. And then, right? How many of you on your wedding day thought you got it all figured out? Even me as a priest, I thought, oh, I got the priesthood down. Five years in the seminary. I know what the priesthood is. Day two, I was like, okay, this is not what I expected, you know? Doesn't mean it's not beautiful, it just means it's different. And so I needed support as a young priest. I still need support as 13 years in. Okay, I need your support and prayers. I have, don't have all the answers. You who are married, you don't have all the answers. You're figuring it out. Come Holy Spirit, tell me what I need, huh? Number three, we need to pray for those who feel called to married life that they find the person that God intends for them and that they pay attention when sometimes moms and dads or other people they love say, you know what, you're in love with this person, but this person's a hot mess. They're not for you, and there's a good reason for it. It's not because, you know, you're Italian and we only marry Italians or you're this and we only do that. It's not what we're talking about. Sometimes to actually see things Because so many times I see people, they didn't listen. I wish I listened to mom and dad. I wish I listened to the people around me. I wouldn't have got in this relationship. But I was so full of infatuation that I didn't listen. So we also want people to discern, is this the person you want me to marry, God? Or are you speaking through the people I love that maybe are saving me from this? Or when you're like, I don't know if I should marry this person. They're like, we love this person. You made a great choice and you pray to God and God says, this is the person. To not be afraid to jump in. They're not perfect. You're not perfect. I know I'm not, right? But to take that risk, that's what life's all about. Taking risks, but guided in prayer through proper discernment. And the church invites us, don't make big decisions without asking God. Come Holy Spirit, tell me, what you want me to do. Guide me, shape me. Number three, we need to pray for those whose marriages have fallen apart. Because marriage is about two people. It takes two to tango. So I might have been all in, but my wife was not. And for whatever reason, she stepped out on me, or whatever reasons, for the marriage to break down. Or I'm the wife, and my husband was not all in. Do we reject these people? What does Jesus say in the gospel? No. It's because of your hardness of heart that God created this rule and the church continues to accompany. We need to continue to pray for people who were all in, but they find themselves alone, separated, divorced. Where does that leave me in the church? How many people say, I can't come to communion? That's not true. Now, if I enter into another relationship, then I fall into the whole adultery thing. So come and see Father Rico so we can make sure that you're ready to go here, okay? But the reality is the church continues to accompany. We need to pray for those 
whose marriages are dissolving, whose relationships are falling apart. I say to my couples that I'm marrying, the priests, deacons, and bishops who married you said, when your marriage is going through trial, come and see us. Let us walk with you. Be that mediator so that we can continue to build those bridges, not tear them down. What God has joined, let no one separate. We want to do our part to walk with you. But in some cases where the marriages have broken down, we need to be praying for them. And if this is you, friends, you are not outside the circle of God's love. God continues to walk with you. And Holy Mother Church, your pastor, is praying for you. And we want to support. We also want to pray for those who've lost their partner. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. They expected those days to be a lot longer than they are. How many people miss their spouse so much so that affects their daily life? Are we praying for the widows and the widowers too? Whether they died of tragic causes or disease or whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter how they died, it matters that they did. We need to support them and love them too because they didn't expect to be alone. And in many cases, which is so beautiful for me to see, they're devastated. They're devastated that their spouse has died. That's the way it should be. I wasn't called to marry life, but I tell my brothers, you got to have a spouse who's going to be devastated at your funeral, not like, thank you, Jesus, this is great. Now I have freedom, you know? Because sometimes I see people and I'm like, I'm crying, you're not. Mm. I'm not here to judge. But the reality is, I love seeing people devastated. Not that I'm happy they're devastated. Stay with me, right? That's love. That's love. Yesterday, I cried at Anna Maria's funeral because I love her. She's not my wife, but she's my sister in Christ. I'm going to miss her. She's been a good friend to me for a long time. She's been a friend of this parish a long time. Dave should be devastated, and he was and is. That's good. That's love. That's what the sacrament calls us to. So friends, these scriptures awaken us. If you've been married civilly because for whatever reason you didn't understand the sacrament, give me a call. I want to have your marriage blessed. Not for me. Not for me, for you. I want you to have that sacramental bond because it's so strong. And it is Jesus who loves bringing his daughter and son together before his altar. So the sanctifying grace of the sacrament comes upon them. If this is you, give me a call. If you're struggling in your marriages, give me a call. If you're divorced or separated, give me a call. You want to talk? Give me a call. If you're a widow or widower, give me a call. The point is, the church is here with you. You don't want to talk to me? We got holy priests in the diocese. Father Bill, fantastic. Father Joe's, fantastic. If another priest you want me to call for you, Bishop Burgey, he'll talk to you. Because we as church, we walk with you. Do not feel isolated. Do not be lied to. Do not listen to what the government says. Listen to what Jesus says. He wants your hearts united in the way he intends. So let's commit ourselves to be all in, whatever our vocation is. Let's commit ourselves to pray for couples who are married, engaged, and single. And let's continue to pray for those whose lives are different than they expected. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Lord our God, we thank you for the great sacrament of holy matrimony. We thank you for the witness of women and men who are all in in their marriages, who continue to put their own needs second to that of their spouse. What a powerful example of love in our world. We as church celebrate and thank you for these witnesses. We ask that you bless all married couples, especially those whose marriages may feel like they are falling apart. Lord, bless all those who are engaged, that they may enter into your sacrament with open and holy hearts. Let's pray for single people who feel they'll always be alone, that they just can't find that significant other. Through the intercession of St. Anne, may they pray and discern to find that person you have chosen for them. Bless those who are separated, divorced, that might feel isolated, cheated, abused, rejected. 
May we as church continue to love and support them. Let us pray for the widow and the widowers who mourn their spouse. May we help them through their grief till that day when you will unite those two hearts in your kingdom again. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Called by God into an understanding of vocation, let us continue our own discernment as we profess our faith in him using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, we come before our God and present to him our needs, especially each of us in our own vocation, the call of married life, ordained life, and single life. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the leaders of the church that they may keep before its members the true dignity of marriage and so help couples stay together in their sacred calling. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for married couples that they may be sensitive to each other's needs and find true happiness in their lives together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those experiencing difficulties in their marriage. May they receive the grace to persevere in their commitment. Let us pray to the Lord. That God strengthen all pro-lifers who suffer ridicule, rejection, or imprisonment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the old, the lonely, and the sick, especially Judy Jack, Bill Nolan, Ernest Fougere, Aidan Keenan, Penelope Pence, Larry Clark, that they may find and have support within the community. Let us pray to the Lord. We ask the Lord to give all those who have died a place in his eternal kingdom, especially Anna Maria Morris, Severin Lasrado, Bernie McDonald, Jay Henderson, Attilio Baggio. Let us pray to the Lord. We also pray for Chase Startek and Tony Petrina. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all the intentions we bring to God from the silence of our hearts. Almighty Father, you have given us the sacrament of marriage as a sign of your love for us. Help us to live in harmony with one another, to lift those who are called to married life in our prayer and to support those whose marriages have ended in a way that was unknown to them. We make these in all prayers through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity. Cleanse me of my many sins. Can I help you? Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands. And through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in him you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you may make them partakers of divine nature and join heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give us a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace, so that the sacrament we celebrate may draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, and without end we acclaim. Mass, we use Eucharistic prayer number four. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed humanity in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all people so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered us covenants and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, 
Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. By Jesus' mercy. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you this, his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Gerard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the religious, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also Tony and Chase and Anna Maria and all who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your apostles, with St. Catherine of Alexandria and all the saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those at home receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us turn to our blessed mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O holy mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us all from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls, amen. Good Saint Joseph, ever watchful guardian of the Holy Family, protect the chosen people of Jesus Christ. Keep us free from the blight of error and corruption and be our ally in the conflict with the powers of darkness. As of old, you rescued the child Jesus from the plots of Herod. So now defend the universal church from all harm. Keep us one and all under your continual protection so that by your help and example, we may lead a holy life die a happy death, and come to possess eternal life in heaven. Amen. Friends, as I mentioned in my homily, Anna Maria Morris passed away and was buried from our parish yesterday, a pillar of our community. I ask that you continue to pray for her soul, as she was a prayer warrior, a very, very faithful friend of the Lord, and a very faithful Catholic educator. She taught for 53 years, not all in the Catholic board, almost all of it. I think it was eight or nine in the public, and then she moved over. Uh, a mother to so many, so many young people, especially those who were uh, ostracized, you know, not the cool kids, et cetera, et cetera. She really targeted them, and I think she's, she certainly made an impact, and we're, uh, we're grateful to God for her friendship and her presence in this parish. And please pray for her partner, Dave, who obviously mourns her loss, and all of us who do too. Number two, we are in the month of October. As I mentioned, tomorrow is the Feast of Our Lady the Rosary. I encourage families, if you're not already doing so, to make sure that you are praying the Rosary as a family. Father Rico, I don't know how to pray the Rosary. Sadly, I've never been shown. St. Joe's Grimsby website, parish resources. Pull me up on your TV and allow me to lead you. The prayers come right up on the screen. and You can pray with your pastor or pray with a holier person. Find somebody else on YouTube, Father Mike Schmitz, the Holy Father. Doesn't matter. Just make sure you're praying because it's so important, not just on her feast day, not just the month of October, but October and May remind us we need to be Marian in our approach in our family living. The month of November is approaching, which is our All Souls Day and month where we pray for our loved ones who have died. If you have not yet picked up your envelope, please do so at the door of the church carefully print, or even better, type your loved one's names who have died. They've already died. Submit it quickly. We already know. If any funerals happen between now and October 31st, we'll add their names too. Don't wait to the last minute. And make sure that your offering is reflective, that there are 30 masses offered for your loved ones. Make sure that your offering is reflective of that, please. We continue to keep Father Ed in our prayers, who remains in hospital. We'll see what God's plan is for him. Again, please don't flood our hospital with visitors. Flood heaven with your prayers. That's the greatest gift we can give to Father Ed while his immediate family and the priests look after his pastoral needs. And I thank you on his behalf for your prayers. Finally, we are 70% sold out for our purse bingo, which happens in two weeks. Women of the parish, if you have not yet purchased your tickets, I once again ask you to support your parish family. This is the most important fundraiser of the year. Make it a priority for you and invite all your female friends for what promises to be an awesome night. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ.
Sing of the God who loves you. Raise your joyful cries. Dance to the life around you. Sing out earth and sky. Sing of the God who loves you. Raise your joyful cries. Dance to the life around you.
ठीक है
Good afternoon. We welcome all parishioners and visitors as we prepare to celebrate the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The CWL will once again be collecting new socks during the month of October. All socks will be given to five agencies in the area and are listed in the parish bulletin. Bins to collect your donations are located in the church foyer. Our designer purse bingo is 70% sold out, so do not delay. Get your table reserved soon for what promises to be an amazing event while supporting this major parish fundraiser. The St. Vincent de Paul Society will once again be selling honey at the Sunday Masses on October the 20th. This fundraiser helps to support their local programs, including clothing for school-aged children. Our celebrant today is Father Paul. Please stand and join in our processional hymn. 